Hey, good afternoon. Today we want to present you with a solar wax melter. We're getting to the time of the year when people are going to be doing extraction and you've got all those uncappings and you've got all the, you know, the wax that you've taken off from your frames and filtered out of your honey. So this is a perfect little model for the, the hobbyist beekeeper to use. It's very simple, very uh, effective. What it is basically is a it does require a little bit of assembly, but what it is, it's a portable little melter system. It's got uh, cellophane here, a heavy duty plastic inside the unit itself. It's very simple. It's a tray that will heat up with the sun. There's a bread pan that will collect honey from. And then there's a series of legs with a beveled angle on them. We do have to do a little bit of assembly to them. We simply assemble the legs. The holes are pre-drawn, drilled in here. We just attach it with the screws that are here. And it allows you to stand this unit up this way, facing the sun. So we put our cappings on top here. The sun will hit it, will melt it very, very quickly, and will fill up into a pan here, which point you can take that off. You will need to have a drill with a Robertson bit, because that's what's required to put it together. You do want to be careful of this plastic film as well, because you can put a hole in it. Eventually you can replace that with just a sheet of glass as well. And then there's a protective cover that comes with it. My recommendation is to replace this with either a piece of plywood or something that's not going to disintegrate in the, in the weather. But there it is, it's a very simple and very effective method of dealing with your cappings and rendering it into wax. Hey, welcome back. This is part two of our hobbyist wax melting uh, display. So I've taken the wax melt we worked on yesterday, we've assembled it, you see the legs on it, and we painted it black. Now what I've done in this case is I painted the inside black and just happened to paint the outside as well. One, because it will retain heat and it'll just make everything nice and warm. I ran this through once to, to, to try it out. That's why we've got a little bit of slum gum here. But you'll see from this particular unit, I've got a pan. What I like to do with these pans is I just like to put a little film of water around it. It just helps the wax come out much easier. You can see that it's on a bit of a slope. The rear legs are a little higher than the front legs. And that just gives it enough the slope that the honey or the, the wax can flow down catches on these edges here there's an opening on the lip and it'll just pour into this this container so I've taken the lid off I've got my my covered outer lid here I brought several different types of samples of things that we can do with this particular unit so what I have here is basically dried dried cappings from filtered honey after we'd extracted it's gone through the filter sieve I've taken this out I've let the bees clean up. They've taken all that honey back into the hive. And this is, this is what's left. So I just, uh, I'm just gonna take it out and dump it all inside this, this wax melt and I'll clean this off a little bit later on. I also have, this is from a, a demonstration uh, uncapping tank. This is what's left after one of my workshops had cleaned wax off of the frames prior to extracting. So this particular one has all sorts of stuff. It's got some really gunky stuff in here as well. That doesn't make nice wax. So I'm just gonna pull that off for now. Um, some of it's a little bit darker. It's got bee parts. Um, the bees I'm gonna throw in the melter anyways and just uh, see what happens. There is a little bit of honey in here as well. I'm not gonna let that worry about uh, worry because I refilter all of this wax once it is melted into a block. So all of this dry, mostly dry stuff is all going on this wax melter as well. It does not take long, an hour or two hours for this to melt, run down here and fill up this pan. I also have a little bit of burr comb I pulled out of a, uh, out of a hive and it's just just natural empty uh, empty comb, so I'm going to throw it in here too. Now one thing I'm going to talk about that I'm not going to do at this point, I'll do it again tomorrow in a demonstration. A really quick easy way of cleaning off 
your queen excluders, when they get all gummed up with wax and propolis and honey, a lot of people have a real problem in trying to get it cleaned off. You use blow torches, you use all sorts of different methods. I found the easiest and most effective way is to put it in my wax melter. So what I've done is I've attached four screws on the sides and I just let them sit. Let this wax melter sit on those screws. It gets it up a little bit higher. I can put it on top of this as well and just let it drip down. I usually like to put it on separately so that it can it can drop down. But I'm just going to leave it in here for now. Um, and we're going to show you after afterwards, after this is all melted and it's run down to fill us up, how effective it is and how it looks. So I'm just going to put this lid back on. I want to make sure it's facing the sun. I want to make sure that the pan is in there so it will collect the wax. And I'm just going to leave it and let the sun bake this in and melt it. Tomorrow we'll be back, we'll take a look and see what's been left inside here. We'll look at the wax that's collected and we'll go on to step number three. So welcome back everybody to our Dancing Bee's solar wax melter demonstration. Yesterday we put a bunch of dried cappings that were left after the bees had dried it and cleaned it out. And we left an excluder with all sorts of wax cappings on it as well. We're just looking to see today how effective it was. Word of warning. These get really hot and you will burn yourself. I always use a hive tool to uh, lift it up and just to check. It is hot, but not unbearably so. So you can look at this and you can see how much cleaner it is than when we put it on. And I'm just gonna put it to one side. I want to show you what's left here on the, uh, the pan as well. So this is what we refer to as slum gum. It's basically the garbage that comes off, you know, the bee parts, there's brood parts, whatnot. It does clean up very easily. Just scrapes off. I usually scrape it into a bucket and then burn it later because it, uh, it burns quite well. But I want to get as much as I can off my steel board here because it will impede other stuff that's melting off it. So I just scoop up as much as I can. I don't want to get it in my wax either. This, this is pretty good. I can live with this. Cleaned all the garbage up. So what we did was, this is a block of wax that uh, has already filled up. We just took this out of one of the, the pans here. You can see it, it'll have to be filtered yet. It's got a little bit of honey in it, but it's a you know, pretty nice block of wax really. Uh, this is one we've done the day before and you can see it's got several layers so it's a mixture of different types of honey and wax and again that'll come out in the filters as well but it makes a nice little brick it's there this one right now is very hot uh, but that is all melted wax and it will uh, it will come out of there as well so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to put another excluder on because like we talked about it's a nice quick easy way of getting the wax and honey and crap off of your excluders. And I just put it on here. Um, and by tomorrow, that'll all have melted off and we'll run in here uh, with the wax. We're gonna put the cover back on it. I do have more cappings I could put on here, but I just wanna make sure that the excluder gets cleaned off and is done and ready for tomorrow. And that's the solar wax melter. Very efficient, very quick and it's a nice and easy to work with.